I lost this tooth here. Sumo wrestling at a vintage party years ago after a vintage party and knocked this tooth out, sumo wrestling, and I had to change my technique and learn how to spit again because straight after that, I was just getting a mess everywhere. And so it took me a while to readjust and block up the hole in the, where the tooth was so I could get out some decent spit again. So you say, do you practice? Well, sometimes you just have to practice because something goes wrong. <laughs> Adelaide is surrounded by wine regions and so it's just seriously part of how we live. Every moment that you have, every celebration, there's always wine there and it can heighten the, heighten the sense of that celebration when you have a special bottle of wine there. It's what I drink, one glass, two glasses or the whole bottle and if you've got to arm wrestle me for the bottle then that's a really good wine. When we taste, we're pretty critical and we tend to pull a wine apart because we're analysing, we're looking for faults or we're looking for what needs to be turned up and turned down you know what do I need to do a bit more of this a bit less of that stop it start it turn it up turn it down if you're doing a tasting in here and there's 150 barrels I think you'd end up in a bit of strife if you're uh, swallowing all of them so spitting is pretty important but making sure you spit in a, a pretty neat way so you're aiming for the the viper just a really nice straight stream quite powerful if you can get it I always like a reasonably big uh, something big to aim at. <laughs> I used to just sort of dribble into the cup. Your whole life you're taught not to spit. You'll find in the international living wine scene there's not many people spitting. Taste? Delicious. I get, you know, hundreds of samples a week and I'm probably tasting around about 100 bottles a week. You know, you have to be disciplined. I have to know that I'm going to be driving home or not driving home. I have to sometimes sit down and write my reviews pretty well straight away. So I've got to be on the ball. So I spit after every wine that I taste. Uh, no, I've seen some pretty impressive spitters. I'm more, <laughs> more a, no, I don't want to say that dribbler, that sounds terrible, but you know, I don't spit with power like people can. I don't have the wonderful single kind of file tasting that you see, you know, the winemakers do that they've obviously learned over years and years and, you know, compete against each other with buckets the other side of the room. I seriously don't do that and I'm seriously impressed by the fact that they do do that. Oh, I think wine communities share a lot of similarities. I think probably there is always a, an element of competition between people, even though it's friendly rivalry. Yeah, it does, it does get a little competitive in the barrel shed. You sort of find yourself looking at the drain and maybe taking a step back. Because when you're judging at wine shows, that's one of the you know, most important things is to be able to spit in a uh, controlled manner instead of you know, all over yourself and other people. So I actually practice in the shower. If you can spit with water, you can spit with wine. So you've got to work on it quite a bit. Mine's developed a lot. I can get a little bit of a, a thin uh, strip these days, but I still dribble on myself. Didn't wear white today. I mean, there's quite a few people who have, who I've seen over the years with some pretty amazing spitting techniques. Uh, people like, I mean, Len Evans was a, a quite amazing, very fine and accurate. Probably the one that stood out most was a, a guy in Champagne when we visited once who had a, this beautiful spit like more than two metres into a bucket, but, but unfortunately uh, had started to wear a hole in his teeth, so that, so that almost had like a little halo when he smiled because the, because champagne's quite acidic and, and it eats enamel in your teeth like anything acidic. Schmitty, uh, towards the end of the tasting the ferment round, during vintage, it sort of <laughs> and just sort of dribbled down his chin and it got particularly messy. We, in the end, we had to get a bib for Schmitty. So when you first pour in a glass, the first thing you're going to look at is the colour. And then a good swirl, get all those volatiles happening and put your nose right in it. Then get the wine into your mouth, swish it. And then it's all about the delivery, I suppose, for spitting, isn't it? That's it.